Okay, we're going to go right now to the Q&A session that Congresswoman Betty McCollum had made with Al Jazeera uh, two years ago. This is dated May 8th of 2021. Um, the Story on, on the Al Jazeera website is not one dollar. U.S. lawmaker urges end to complicity in Israeli abuses. Uh, the subtitle is Congresswoman Betty McCollum tells Al Jazeera about effort to ensure Israel doesn't use U.S. aid to violate Palestinian rights. Uh, so then she had put a bill, H.R. 2590, uh, for her tweet from Twitter. Uh, dated May 6, 2021, police violence against Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah who only want to remain in, ho in the homes they've lived in for generations is state-sponsored persecution. No U.S. taxpayer dollars should support the annexation of Palestinian land or destruction of Palestinian homes, H.R. 2590. Uh, she had an email exchange with Al Jazeera. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, I'll read it for in the terms of both uh, Al Jazeera with the question and then Betty McCollum's answer. Uh, and again, you go to aljazeera.com from 2021 and you can find this for yourself. Uh, so Al Jazeera. Why is this bill necessary? Millions of Palestinians in the West Bank and East Jerusalem are subject to repressive conditions under Israeli military occupation that systemically violate their human rights. U.S. military aid to Israel enables that occupation. My bill prohibits U.S. funds from supporting or enabling human rights abuses. Not one dollar of U.S. taxpayer funds should be used to violate the human rights of the Palestinian people living under Israel's military occupation. The measure has drawn considerable attention in Congress and among groups that work on Israel-Palestine issues in the U.S. Why do you think the idea of conditioning U.S. aid to Israel is so controversial? In Congress, Israel is viewed as a special democracy that shares our values, as well as important bilateral security goals. But Israel's military detention of Palestinian children, the demolition of Palestinian homes, and the unilateral annexation of Palestinian lands are actions not supported by the American people and they do not reflect our values. The dehumanization of the Palestinian people has been such an effective narrative that 75% of Congress wants absolutely no restrictions on U.S. military aid to Israel, effectively supporting the systemic repression of a Palestinian society. Have you seen a shift at all among U.S. lawmakers when it comes to Washington's unconditional support for Israel? If so, how do you explain these changing attitudes? There is a core group of very courageous colleagues who seek the facts and speak the truth. They are willing to stand up for Palestinian rights because they recognize Palestinians as human beings who have rights and deserve to be treated with dignity. The majority of Congress finds it convenient to demonize Palestinians and support Israel's policy of systemic persecution. There is also a group that is uncomfortable with Israel's actions but are unwilling to challenge the status quo. Change will not be made overnight or through one bill. It will come when the American people no longer tolerate our tax dollars being used to support the systemic persecution of the Palestinian people. And the public pressure on elected officials is significant enough to affect change. Over 300 members of Congress recently signed a letter calling for aid to Israel to be unconditional. Reducing funding or adding con conditions on security assistance would be detrimental to Israel's ability to defend itself against all threat, threats, it reads. What is your response to this? By refusing to place clear restrictions on U.S. military aid to Israel, Congress is effectively giving Israel the green light to abuse the human rights of Palestinian children, demolish Palestinian homes, and to annex Palestinian land. Congress knows systemic persecution and human rights abuses are being perpetrated by Israel against the Palestinian people. And this letter says, we do not care. And in fact, we will continue to look the other way. What level of support do you believe your bill has in Congress? The goal of my bill is to acknowledge the humanity of the Palestinian people and to condemn their repression. At a moment in U.S. history where systemic racism and discrimination in our own country is being exposed and rejected, why is our government helping to fund the repression and abuse of the Palestinian people? It is my hope that civil society, faith-based groups, and advocates for civil and human rights will pressure Congress to restrict U.S. support for Israel's military occupation and the dehumanization of the Palestinian people.